we have a minimum or a maximum function. This graph over here, that would be a maximum point because it's been reflected. What's the last thing that we learned in grade 10 when it came to vertex form? What did you have to analyze or know with vertex form? So it starts with the T, what I'm looking for. What are vertical stretches, vertical compressions, reflections? What are they? Good. Transformation. And we have a whole unit dedicated to transformations again in this course. So even though we don't focus on it in Unit 8, transformations are going to be in the horizon, one of the topics we're going to deal with. So, same slide, I just want to analyze it a little, little further. So for this particular equation, or if I have the equation negative, in case you can't see it, let me write it in big, negative 1 half x minus 1 squared plus 2. So just from the equation, without even drawing it, I know that my vertex, the x-coordinate of my vertex is going to be the opposite sign of what's inside the bracket. So because I see negative 1 inside the bracket, my x-coordinate is going to be a positive 1. And the y-coordinate of your vertex, what you see is what you get. So if I see a positive 2, you're going to write positive 2 for the y-coordinate of your vertex. Now the axis of symmetry that is the line that goes through and divides all quadratic functions are symmetrical. So it divides your graph in half. And your axis of symmetry is always in the form x is equal to because it's a vertical line and vertical lines are always in the form x is equal to. To get the value of the axis of symmetry, you only have to look at the x-coordinate of your vertex because it's going to go through the x-coordinate of your vertex. So my axis of symmetry is x is equal to 1. Uh, we've already identified that this is a maximum point because I have a negative, the graph has been reflected. And I could go ahead and state all the transformations, but we're going to leave that to another seminar because you don't really have to do that in your unit. So uh, this equation also gives us all the transformations. I like to think of it as the most important form of a quadratic equation because uh, it gives us the most information. However, if we're not looking for the maximum or minimum, uh, you do not need to change your quadratic equation from standard form to vertex form. You only need to do that if the question is asking you for a maximum or a minimum value, okay? Does anyone have any questions about those three equations? <coughs> okay, so now uh, the next part of your unit, and this is the only part where you're actually going to have textbook work, is completing the square. And I want to see everyone taking notes on completing the square because I chose a question with large values and I want to make sure you know how to do this. There's, there should be no questions about completing the square. <coughs> okay, so I have the, uh, the question reads, the parab parabolic flight of an aircraft can be modeled by the quadratic equation h is equal to negative 10 t squared plus 300 t plus 9,750. On a side note, if you're going into engineering, you're going to get a lot of questions similar to this, where h is the altitude of the aircraft in meters and t is the time in seconds since weightless, weightlessness was achieved. It should be weightlessness. Find the maximum altitude reached by the aircraft. As soon as you see that word maximum, and you know that maximum corresponds to the negative in front of my 10, <laughs> you know right away that you are going to be required to complete the square and to try to find the point, the vertex of your graph. And more specifically, you want to find 
when we're talking about the maximum height, that should be the y coordinate of your vertex. You're trying to find your y value of your vertex. <coughs> okay, so first thing I'm going to do, um, let's do it on the next slide. H is equal to, do you guys need more time to copy it down? Sorry, I'm working at warp speed. 